and in today's Tuesday Craft Noon, I'd like to share with you a second holiday card that you can find in a take and make kit here at the library, and that is a holiday wreath card. Now, this looks like it might be fairly complex, but in reality, your pattern is just, I don't know if you can see it here, it's just two concentric circles, one large one around the outside and one around the inside that's much smaller. The reason it looks more complicated is we're going around and around the circle in different patterns each time, which is why I'm going to do this video for you today. So to make this, you're going to need your card stock. I've already cut mine, so you take an eight and a half inch by 11 inch piece of card stock, cut it horizontally across the middle. This already has the pattern punched out too. I don't know, maybe you can see it a little better there. That will be included in the kit. It's helpful to have a piece of scrap cardboard that you can put under the card stock when you're punching the holes out because you're using an awl or a big needle and it gets sharp and you don't want to damage the surface underneath. Now we're only using pretty much one color in this. So I'm using a dark green embroidery floss and I've already got it threaded. You'll need your embroidery scissors. You're going to need tape because just like with the other cards, we tape the ends down instead of knotting them. And to get the extra little pop of color here, you want a very thin ribbon. So I've got gold for mine. This is eighth of an inch wide, if that helps you finding what you need. So we've got everything here. Let's get started. So I've already got my card prepped. I've got my needle ready. We're ready to go. What I'm going to do is with this outer ring of holes. We're going to go around four times. The first time we're skipping two holes, the second time we're skipping three, third time we're skipping four, fourth time we're skipping five, and I'll show you how to keep track of that. The idea is, and let's start at the top, go up this hole, and I'll tape down the end of it to secure it. So I've come up this hole. I am going to go two holes forward and go down. Well, I'm going to try to go down. I'm going to move one hole forward and come up. go back two holes, go down. And this is the pattern. You move forward one hole, then you do your pattern. So move forward two holes, move ahead a hole, go back two holes. That's the same kind of pattern you're going to be doing each time only the number of holes in the pattern is going to vary. Whenever you go down, you're always moving one hole forward to come up, but it's the difference in between. So I come up and that's when the pattern happens, whether it's two holes here or the next round, it's three or four or five or whatever, so that you're getting these even stitches all the way around, but you're continually advancing forward, even with your back steps, if that makes sense. So down, forward one and up. This time it's back two and down. Forward one and up. forward two and down. Same number of holes. You're just alternating the back and forth with that little step in between to advance you. 
there's probably a clearer way to explain that. I haven't figured it out yet, so bear with me. Hopefully you're figuring it out as you watch. All right, so that completes the pattern going by two spaces. Now I'm going to come back up to this top hole and we're going to do three spaces. So instead of going one, two to follow the same path we did before, I'm going to go one, two, three over to this hole and down and then go forward one. and back three, and forward one, and forward three. Now, I'm close enough to the end here. I'm just going to tape that off. Trim the end. And I've already got my next needle threaded. So I'm coming up the next hole. And it always helps to double check where are you in the pattern. So now we'll go back three and we'll keep going with this pattern around the circle again. like about doing it this way, even though it can get a little mind boggling, you really have to pay close attention to it, is it creates layers to this circle. You get a little bit of depth to it, it thickens the wreath out, and it just looks really cool. If you wanted to, you could do slightly different shades of green for each round around the circle. That would be really cool. You can also create those shades by taking maybe two colors, like this green and a slightly lighter one, and you start off the outer ring with all dark. The next time you go around, you have maybe two strands of dark, one strand of light. Third time you go around, you've got two strands of light, one strand of dark, and your final go around would be all light. And that creates a really beautiful effect too. So that's something to think about. All right, so that's got us all the way around doing the three holes. Now I'm almost out with this thread, so I'm just going to go ahead and tape this off at the moment. 
And I'm going to take a break and go load up my needles again. And we'll get started once again. All right, be back in a moment. So while we took that little break there, I discovered I didn't have quite enough of the darker green, but I had this green, which is about a shade lighter. So what I decided to do was, uh, with the rest of the dark green that I had, I did round the going by four holes with two strands of the dark green and one strand of the light. It might be a little hard to see, it's starting to get a little bit lighter here, a little bit of a sparkle to it. The other thing I wanted to point out about this round with going by fours is the way you know you've done it right is you get squares, overlapping, twisting, squares. Because we've got 16 holes going around, when you go by four, you're getting right angles all the time. So these squares just kind of stack and turn around the circle. And I just love how that turns out. That's probably my favorite round. Now for the very last round where we're going by five holes, what I've done is threaded my needle with two strands of the light green and one strand of the dark. So that's going to lighten it up even more. So I'll go ahead and tape that down. And we're going one, two, three, four, five holes. Now the more holes that you jump going around the circle, the more thread you're using, the more embroidery floss. So whether you want to cut your thread longer, or you just want to keep re-threading your needles more often, is totally up to you. But just be aware of that and plan for that before you start stitching. You might have a happy little accident like I've had here. Like our friend Mr. Bob Ross used to say, happy little accidents they seem to work out somehow. But it's also good to be prepared for random things that might happen like that. Whoops, went up the wrong one. So let's just pop that back out, maybe. Had to trim that end because it was getting a little ragged and just doesn't want to thread. Jim, you're welcome to trim this section. <laughs> it's taking me a while here. All right, finally got that needle re-threaded, so let's try this again. This is one it's helpful to look at what you've been doing so far. So if I look back one hole, and this is where the line is leading to, the most recent line, then I know my line is going to go one hole forward, so I need to go down here. And that corrects the mistake I made. And 
and there we need to stop again and put a little tape down. Okay, so I'm almost done here and I've just got a couple more stitches to make before we finish up this final round from the outer side. And there we go. Now you'll see if you're if you're pulling your stitches a little tight, it might kind of pop your cardstock out of place. But it's actually kind of cool because then you get more of a 3D effect with it. So take your pick if you want to keep your stitches a little bit loose and flat to the card or take that risk of it popping out a little bit. Either way, it's going to work. So do what you want to do. Now for this final circle around the middle, I'm just going to use three strands of the lighter green to finish it off. And we're just going to go by two holes again. So I'll start at the top as usual. And here we go, two holes. Now you wouldn't have to do the inner ring of holes because as you can see, that wreath was pretty nice all on its own just from the outer rings. But I kind of like how this smooths it out in the center and finishes it off. If you decide you just want to do the outer ones, just poke out the holes for the outer ring and don't worry about the middle one. That's totally fine. I'll tell you a secret. This is based on a different stitching pattern that I've done before. And this is what I decided to do with it. So you can go ahead and decide how you want to do it your way. I'm just showing you how I've got it set up for the Take and Make kits. And I think you'll find the more you do this kind of stitching, the more you can do a little bit of improvising for yourself. It's a lot of fun. Oops. Wow, just enough floss to finish off that circle. Yay, I love when that happens, don't you? Go ahead and tape that down, trim the ends, and there we go, our stitching is done. Now, if you wanna finish it off, if you want to write something in the middle, you're welcome to do that. I've done that here. I've done some with joy, some with peace on earth, Totally up to you. The other thing is to cut some ribbon and I'm going to cut, uh, that's probably six to eight inches maybe. And what I'm going to do is very carefully kind of weave it under here at the top. And it's tricky. It's gonna get caught in a lot of different threads. All right, so there's one. And let's see if we can thread it under here. Okay. 
Sometimes if that ribbon starts fraying at the end, it's gonna fight going under. Let's see if we can get a little help here with the needle. Try and lift one of these. Yes, there we go. And then pull it through. All right. And just kind of even it up. Now don't go too tight. You want to be gentle so that you don't break your stitching threads. But let's try making a little bow. And very, very carefully, Make sure you pull your ribbon away from your stitching to trim the ends. Trust me, I know this from experience. I ruined one card by not doing this and snipped right through the wreath threads. And Yep. Take it from me, let my mistakes be your guide. <laughs> and there we go, we've got a nice wreath holiday card. Now you'll probably want to cut a piece of paper to cover your stitching in the back. So I'll let you take care of that on your own, but that's basically all there is. So what I will be doing is making take and make kits for this card pattern. Um, it'll have the card stock, the pattern, the embroidery floss and some ribbon. And those will be available, I think the week after Thanksgiving. You can go ahead and sign up for them now through the library calendar of events on our website. Um, there still are places for it. And you know, if you run over to the waiting list, if we've got that many people signed up, I'll see what I do, see what I can do about making sure everyone gets a kit. There you go. A nice, simple, fairly quick to put together holiday card, just in case you need to get some last minute cards together for friends and family. So I hope you give a chance to try this at home. And in the meantime, I hope you will stay healthy, be kind, and get creative. Bye.